Today we're going to continue talking about faith. We're going to continue to talk about God, revival, and the things that we are really after in our church. Faith, Prophet Tibi Joshua said, and it's commonly spoken of, is it's like a currency of heaven. You know, on this earth you work eight hours a day and some of you work more, some less. But you work for one reason. It's not just to utilize your potential and utilize your gifts and skills. But it's also so at the end of the two weeks or maybe you get paid once a month, you get this check from your employer. And it's called money. And with this money, you're able to pay for your bills. With this money, you're able to purchase new shoes. With this money, you're able to pay for utilities. With this money, you're able to purchase food. And with this money, if you have extra, you're able to buy some other extra things. Perhaps go on a vacation. Your whole life, the quality of it, does not depend on how bright the sun shines. And how much rain comes on the earth. The quality of your life on this earth depends on how much money you have and how well you can spend it. Because on the same green earth there are people who are making more money and they're enjoying their life a lot more. But they have more things that they can do because of more money. They can drive instead of taking a transit. They can go to a vacation instead of just going to Columbia Park at the vacation. You know they can do a lot of great things because they have more funds. That's why we go to college so we can bump up our income a little bit so that when we have a little bit of money we can have a little bit better lifestyle. We all know that our lifestyle depends on our relationships with people, our relationship with God. But at the end of the day we all know the quality of life is somewhat hinges on this currency called money. What money is in the natural world, faith is in the realm of the spirit. How with money you can go to a vacation, with money you can drive a nicer car, with money you can have a better house, with money you can have you know better clothes, with money you can just improve quite some things in external material things in life. That's exactly how faith is as relates to spirituality and the power of God and the Holy Spirit. It is the currency of heaven. It's the currency with which you buy spiritual blessings. It's the currency that God even made this to be the currency with which you purchase the greatest miracle of all miracles. That is your salvation. Faith becomes the currency with which you receive the lesser miracles like job promotion. Like a job. Like healing. Like God's protection. God's provision or God's blessings. It is the currency of heaven. And just like in the natural you work so hard so you can get money, in the spiritual your work has to be not to just become a better person but to have a stronger faith. Most people sum up Christianity to quitting certain bad habits that make them not look like a Christian, not behave like a Christian. But the re in reality your spiritual life has to have a goal. And that is to constantly, every day, at least five times during the day, build your faith. You spend eight hours, five, five, times, five, five days a week, building a currency with which you can operate in a very shallow level. I want to challenge you to begin to invest into your faith. Because when your currency, when your faith, spiritual currency goes up, your quality of life begins to go through the roof. The miraculous begin to happen in your life. Not because you're a good person, but because you have faith, necessary faith, to begin to see the blessings of God in a spiritual world that will transcend in your natural, relational, financial, emotional, marital, in every area of your life. Protect your faith. Guard your faith. Jesus said to Peter, he said, Satan will come and he asked me to sift you. But he said, I prayed for your faith. He said, your faith is this currency and it's so valuable. Faith honor, honors God. And God in return always honors faith. Everything that's valuable in your life must be insured. If you have a car, it's right now illegal to have no insurance on the car. If you have a house, now it's important and necessary and mandatory that you have to have an insurance on the car. Now we have even life insurance, means we have insurance on you. When you die, 
that somebody gets some money for that time that you won't be there because of the income that will be compensated through the life insurance we have even health insurance when something bad happens to you so you can go in we have insurance for the companies organizations because everything that's valuable needs to be insured and insurance does not prevent an accident but it causes the accident not to be your end it causes the accident to be a time where you don't lose everything but you actually can get through and maybe even come out better my dad made money on insurance when he got into car accident i made money on insurance when i had car accidents when it was not my fault because there was insurance i didn't have to pull money out of my pocket the insurance paid i even had a little bit of extra because of insurance and so when you have insurance not that you want an accident but you're not afraid when one happens because your valuables are insured and the best insurance is the full coverage insurance when it covers your good and it covers your bad it's when it's your fault and it's not your fault but it still covers it and today I want to talk about insuring your faith did you know that your faith can also be insured did you know that your faith is so valuable and there is an insurance for your faith now Geico doesn't provide that insurance in 15 minutes will not save you 15 minutes 15 percent and progressive does not have this insurance all state unfortunately does not carry insurance for faith but something else carries this insurance how can i insure my faith how can i cause because we know what brings faith in our church this is drilled every week the word of god and the works of god bring faith when you hear the sermons and when you hear the testimonies it builds your faith so I'm not going to talk about today what brings your faith but I'm going to take one step further and talk about what can ensure your faith. Amen? Amen. Got your curiosity a little bit going? Just a little bit. Enough. Let's take a reading in 1st Timothy chapter 1 and verse 19. It says the following. Having faith and a good conscience which some having rejected concerning the faith have suffered a shipwreck so Paul is saying that we must have faith and he also connects something else to faith he says a good conscience and he says some people rejected this good conscience and because of that concerning the faith the faith suffered a shipwreck so faith has went through a shipwreck because faith was not secured by a good conscience now let's read in Saint Timothy Apostle Paul says in first Timothy chapter 3 verse 9 he said the following holding on the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience so it's interesting how Apostle Paul says the way you hold on to the faith that you have in God is with the pure conscience that means faith does not just hang in there in the air great faith in God it's not just something that just floats out there in the air but he says it's held it's made secure with a pure conscience so we can come to the conclusion that a conscious is the insurance for your faith but let's read one more verse in the same letter to first timothy and this is chapter 4 verse 1 and verse 2. it says the following now the spirit expressly says that in the later days means in the in the last days some will depart from the faith so in the last days people will depart from the faith not meaning they will lose salvation but they will walk away from living a life of faith giving heed to the deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons speaking lies and hypocrisy having their own conscience seared with hot iron so we see apostle paul in one letter three times connects your faith to your conscience He's not saying that your faith comes from your conscience. 
we all know faith comes from the hearing and the hearing from the word of God Romans chapter 10. We know that faith comes from seeing God's works Jesus says in gospel of John but what we see apostle Paul describes is what he says is that faith gets secured and insured by conscience so if you're taking notes I want you to write down this main thought from this message is that a violated conscience shipwrecks faith a violated conscience shipwrecks faith number one violated conscience shipwrecks faith when your conscience is violated your faith suffers a wreck it gets wrecked it suffers you can listen to testimonies until your phone dies you can listen and read the bible until you fall asleep but if after all of that is done your conscience is compromised your faith is as good as titanic it's shipwrecked it's beautiful it's strong but apostle paul tells a young timothy and today this words sound to young people in the 21st century that your faith is ensured by pure and a good conscience and without this conscience without paying attention to your conscience you allow your faith to be hit an iceberg and get shipwrecked uh, me and my wife went on a cruise let's show the picture before this we went on this cruise four years ago on the honeymoon and this very big and very wonderful ship and on the ship there was tons of people many many floors and beautiful life and ships are mainly made for uh, transporting cargo uh, for war for sports uh, for um, connecting people from one place to another and like this ship it's for just fun no purpose you just cruise around you don't bring anything to nobody you don't fight nobody you just get in there you eat you sleep you play games you swim and then you come back to the same place where you came from and that's it when we first end up on a ship it's important when you go on a cruise ship never to have any experience or any knowledge of previous ships that died or sunk or got wrecked so having a memory of Titanic when you are on a cruise ship is not going to build your experience it will ruin it we happened to be on a ship during the time where the storms came in fact four during seven days they were minor but enough that in one day in one night the storm that was kind of severe and our ship was going not through the storm but around the storm and the glass on the desk was moving by itself from one side to another there was no magician there was no sorcerer it was because of the storm and you have the flashes of Titanic you're like here is I have my beautiful wife just like the movie and just like the story she survives and I die <laughs> we end up there on the first day they call for security for security meeting and they bring us to this theater and they go over the procedure of in case the ship sinks that is not the best way to start a honeymoon I'm just gonna tell you right there and right away I mean I understand they have to go through the procedure but they told us they have enough of those boats in case the ship they told us where to find life jackets and and all of these things and so the rest of my cruise no offense but I had a little fear deep in my soul every time the ship would shake a little bit now by the grace of God seven days of great adventure ended really beautifully really wonderfully and our ship did not end up like this ship <laughs> this was not nice if you didn't if you end up on this cruise you did not have a good time 
and if you survived you definitely have stories to tell to your children but you also probably want a refund from this cruise okay but this is exactly how some people's faith looks like when a conscience is ignored and this is what's going to happen to people's faith apostle paul says they suffer a shipwreck they suffer a time where their ship instead of carrying them to the other side their ship instead of transporting a blessings of god instead of taking them to the harbor it takes them to the bottom and they abandon their faith they abandon their relationship with god they abandon their bible reading they abandon the christian standards they subscribed to previously some people blame this to my mom died some people blame this to god didn't answer this prayer some people blame this to this person hurt me but paul says one of the main reasons men suffer shipwreck is not because you faced a disappointment and god did not give you an answer he's saying in the beginning your faith was not insured with a pure conscience he does not brush away the fact that our faith will be tested and tried what he is telling us your faith needs more than just good testimonies and good podcasts your faith also needs to be secured by your conscience conscious consciousness is something that it's very important to us the bible talks about it the bible mentions 31 times in the new testament word conscience and word conscience is very important a lot of quotes about it and i want you to see what abraham abraham lincoln said about conscience during the time of war when he was being forced to make decisions that were against his conscience and he started to act on decisions based on his conscience and he started to lose his friends people started to leave him and this is what he said in the peak of the controversy in his life he said i desire so to conduct the affairs of this administration that if at the end when i come to lay down the reins of power i have lost every other friend on earth i shall at least have one friend left and that friend shall be down inside of me what he was saying is that I am okay with losing every friend I know today as a president of United States but he said when I've lost all the friends make sure when I lay to sleep I still have a friend inside of me sadly most people today will gain every friend and lose the friend inside There is no sleep softer than a clear conscience and somebody said a conscience is something that has to go to sleep first before you can and some of you know what that means you can convince every friend that what you're doing is right you can convince everyone around you but if your conscience is troubled you're not going to sleep peacefully you will never enjoy whatever you're going to do you cannot enjoy why because your conscience won't let you and somebody say amen Apostle Paul says something else about conscience that was very interesting is that he said when he stood in front of one person and and he said this he says this is the reason I do my best to always have a clear conscience toward God and toward people Apostle Paul says in front of a, a ruler he says I do my best to have a clear conscience before two most important beings God and people I love what prophet T.B. Joshua says because he said the peace of conscience we derive from walking with the Lord produces internal joy assurance of life ease of heart the peace of conscience is our inheritance from our Lord Jesus Christ I mentioned to you three very important men that most of you have heard before but most importantly apostle paul tells to young timothy your faith is insured by your conscience if your conscience is ignored 
your faith will very soon suffer a shipwreck. I, when I was studying for this message, I came across a few interesting quotes. I'll just read it to you. It says, a conscience I mentioned to you is like a baby. It has to go to sleep before you can. Benjamin Franklin said, a good conscience is a continual Christmas. A best place to rest your head is on a clear conscience. He's, somebody else said, a guilty conscience needs no accuser. And somebody else said, a man's conscience, like a warning light on a highway, tells him what he shouldn't do, but it does not keep him from doing it. He who loses his conscience has nothing left that is worth keeping. There is no pillar so, no pillow, no, so soft as a clear conscience. Can somebody say amen? I want to give you three consequences of rejected conscience. The first consequence of rejected conscience is that it grieves the Holy Spirit. Most of us do not realize but when you become a Christian your conscience becomes alive through the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit resurrects it and it becomes a vehicle through which Holy Spirit speaks to you. Holy Spirit speaks to your spirit. Your spirit is made out of three components. It's made out of conscience, it's made out of intuition and it's made out of subconscious. These three become the vehicles through which Holy Spirit sends His information to you. 95% of all people who ever hear God do not hear God in their ears. They hear God through their conscience. Most of people who say, I want to hear God. It was wonderful. We started to read the book, Good Morning Holy Spirit. And many people in our home group started to ask this question. How can I hear the Holy Spirit? And many times we think it's something mystical. We think it's something like floating in the sky. Or we think it's like Samuel. We think it's going to have this movie kind of a sound effect to it. Chills in your spine with a little music playing in the background. But if you ever walked with the Lord, you recognize and realized that when your conscience bothers you, it's the still small voice. And this voice is the vehicle the Holy Spirit uses. So actually we can come to the conclusion the way you treat your conscience is the way you treat the Holy Spirit. We can say, we welcome you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Holy Spirit. Take more of me, Holy Spirit, and give me more of you. But the real value you place on the Holy Spirit is not what you say in church about Holy Spirit. It's how you respond to Him in the church and outside of the church when He troubles your conscience. So rejected conscience grieves the Holy Spirit. When we accept and we pay attention to our conscience, we can develop a relationship with a Holy Spirit. The second thing that rejected conscience does is it gets seared. It gets dull. The more conscience is rejected, the more conscience becomes not sensitive. An Indian man, they asked an Indian man one day, what is a conscience? And he said, a conscience is this peg that has these four sharp edges. And when you do something bad, it pushes you to the wall and cuts you with it. But when you keep doing something bad, it gets so smooth on the edges that it becomes a circle and it doesn't cut you no more. It actually gives you fun. And that's exactly what conscience is. When it's ignored, it loses its sharpness. And after a while, you're doing what's wrong, feeling like it's right. And that's where people can do kill somebody and don't think nothing wrong about it because their conscience is seared. Conscience is so precious that if it's ignored once, ignored twice, ignored third time and then you, you just don't even know it does not speak. It's a broken compass and you are running your life doing what you want to do thinking everything is fine when in actuality you're way off. The third thing that the conscience does is it shipwrecks your faith when it's rejected. We already mentioned that. I find an example in the Bible of King David when the Bible says that he was being chased by his father-in-law Saul and who was his king, who was his boss. And a few times the Lord put Saul into David's hands within the reach to kill him actually. He was able to. 
and one particular time you know David steals the jar and the spear and he returns them back but there was another time when the Bible says that David was hiding in the cave and Saul went in to use a restroom in the cave and somehow what he was urinating the Bible says that David ran to the back and he cut a little bit of the rope of Saul and there is this part that it says there that David felt guilty for cutting the robe of a king he was only doing it to prove to him I'm not interested in your death like people tell you but he felt even guilty for cutting a piece of a robe of a king now when you look at life of David you see that his faith was so bold and strong it was ensured every time David guarded his conscience he lived with his conscience so strong he protected so carefully and he probably did not know that in protecting his conscience it's his conscience that holds his faith and that's why David was able to even the older days of his life be a man of great faith great valor and great boldness why because a man who protects his conscience is the man who protects his faith and a man who begins to slip up like Samson drinking here sleeping there eating touching the dead lion sleeping with the with with the prostitute flirting with Delilah and he's compromising his conscience and the Bible says it becomes seared and faith slips through the finger he gets up and he says I will defeat the Philistines like I've done before and the Bible says he did not know the Lord left him because a conscience that is ignored not only it grieves the Holy Spirit not only it it gets dull but it ruins your faith you don't have boldness and you know that about yourself I know that about me when I ignore my conscience I don't want to pray I don't want to read the Bible I don't want to pray for the sick I don't believe God can use me when my conscience is ignored I don't have the boldness to tell somebody that Jesus can save them I don't have the boldness to tell somebody you know what you're gonna go to hell if you live like that that is gone my faith is gone and guess what happens I become negative I become depressed I am tired my life has no meaning I come home and I just want to lock myself in the room why because I have no faith when I have no faith I have no victory I have no life I have no hope and I have no tomorrow and the reason my faith slips through the cracks is because my faith requires more and podcasts and testimonies it requires me a diligent careful strategic protection from my conscience ignored conscience will shipwreck faith a protected conscience I'm not saying your conscience will give you faith if you are living by your conscience but you're not reading the word of God and not watching testimonies your faith will be weak but it will be protected but when your faith is growing when your faith is maturing when you see the testimonies when you begin to pray for people and you begin to see results you must protect that faith with a secure pure and good conscience can somebody say amen something else is very important concerning conscience that I want you to learn and that is you should be only influenced by your conscience to that degree as your conscience is influenced by the Word of God there's a big deception when it comes to taking care of your conscience and that is this follow your conscience people say that can only be applied if your conscience follows the word of God if the word of God is not influencing your conscience then following your conscience is the same thing as following a wheelbarrow when you follow a wheelbarrow you're directing it and you're following it so you're over here patting yourself on the back saying I am following a wheelbarrow I am following my conscience my conscience told me to sleep with that guy and therefore it must be from God because my conscience told me to also give my meal to the homeless man who stands by Winko and so if my conscience said this and if my conscience tells me to look at this pornography and this is good then this must be good and you put your conscience above God but your conscience does not depend on the word of God that your conscience is in the hands of your flesh not in the hands of the Holy Spirit and it is dangerous to follow it 
you can only follow your conscience to that degree that your conscience is submerged into the word of God a conscience without the word of God is a courtroom without a judge it's pointless and following it is actually following a sick sin-filled devil-led heart and you may pat yourself on the back and you may get a lot of likes on Instagram for that quote but listen you will go straight to hell because your conscience if it's seared if it's a mess if it's not connected to the word of God it's gonna guide you off the road and you will not get to the right path and therefore the goal today is make sure my conscience is trained by the word of God and then I can trust my conscience to lead me in the right path that's why people in other religions can kill and not feel guilty because they are trained in their conscience by the religious teachings each child that is born their conscience is a blank canvas and whatever parents and the society draws on it that's how they're gonna live by and therefore when you come to church you can't live say my heart tells me my bible tells me your heart is sick if it's not changed by the word of god and therefore you cannot use your heart as a reference for your decisions why because your heart must be born again by the word of God and only then you can feel your heart and the Holy Spirit can use it until then your heart is a wheelbarrow you're pushing it as you're following it and so in reality you are the God of your own life not God of the universe and so following a conscience only as our conscience is following the word of God I want to encourage you tonight not to compromise I want to encourage you tonight when you don't have a license not to drive because that's compromising your conscience when you don't have insurance not to print a paper from Google and fake insurance card because it's compromising your conscience when you want to watch something not to download torrents because it's called cyber theft it's compromising your conscience when you're looking at pornography you're compromising your conscience when you're talking to somebody sneaking out in a restaurant so that nobody else is there at that time you know it's for sure if you have to sneak out you're compromising your conscience if you have to text somebody and you have to delete the text message or if the youth pastor would see it you would feel bad it's compromising your conscience if you have to chase a guy you're compromising your conscience because guys have to pursue girls if you're dating five people at the same time you're compromising your conscience when you begin to do the things that in your heart and the worst part is this is that sometimes you're sitting and you're saying it's nothing wrong then I have the second question is your conscience submitted to the Word of God because if it's not your conscience is not your friend your conscience is poison your conscience is bad you cannot come to the good destination compromising you cannot have a great marriage through the way of compromise you cannot have a great ministry we cannot have a great revival if all of us corporately will not commit to saying no to compromise even when no one is watching I've learned it the hard way when we came to the United States and the freshmen going to Hanford High School and they told us that when you get out of your last class you have to get on the first bus but they never explained that there's transit buses and school buses I didn't have a cell phone and uh, I got out of school and I went to the first bus I went to the yellow bus but I didn't even pay attention that there was another buses right in front of the yellow buses they were called transit buses and I was supposed to be on a transit bus so here I am in the yellow bus I am convinced I'm headed home the only problem is nobody else is there that is familiar but I convinced myself it's a first bus but it's a wrong bus they started to drop off the kids and all the kids are looking at me the bus driver looking at me is like we're a new kid and I was like what are you racist why are they looking so weird at me and after the last kid was dropped off I'm the only kid in the bus I speak no English I don't know the address to my house I don't have the phone number and I don't have the cell phone and here I am two hours later 
and this teacher tries to explain this bus driver says sit down and one day and I'm gonna go pick up other kids drop them off and then find you where you live and bring you home which will be like five hours later and I've learned that day you cannot get to the right destination getting on the wrong bus you cannot get to your dreams getting on the bus of compromise no matter how small the compromise is no matter how justifiable it is and no matter how many people you can trick that they cannot see it will catch up to you and you will realize you are at the wrong place when the license is taken when you get pulled over and you have to carry it to a Benton County when you realize that you have a kid you're not married and that was not your dream you will begin to realize that your life is falling through the cracks and it's not God's fault it's that there's different buses and these buses have different destinations and the bus of compromise never leads to the dreams and the things that you have in your life I'm gonna hit some of you with the truth today because life will hit you harder because life does not have mercy because life does not just scream once it screams every day when you end up in the wrong place when people end up in hell it's too late and so really want to challenge all of us including myself because this message applies to me that pay attention to your conscience and don't get on the bus of compromise hoping you're gonna get to revival hoping you're gonna get to something wonderful and if you are on the bus of compromise there is this thing on the bus where you can pull and get off today you can do that today you can give your life to God today you can say you know what I'm gonna throw away the drugs I'm gonna throw away the drinking and I'm gonna throw away the partying a lot of people think that you know I could come to church on on Friday or come to church on Wednesday but I can go party on the weekend you know and some people excuse it there's like you know well I'm gonna give myself a little pat back a, a reward I've been going good with God for two months so now I want to give myself a little slack imagine you're getting married and for two months you want to reward yourself for being married for two months by going to a strip club how foolish is that only people with mental problems do that people with normal mind will never do that I want to challenge you today to commit yourself to living a life without compromise and sometimes to do that you're gonna to have to go for some time without friends because this is what I realized about young people they cannot live a life without compromise without losing friends and when you lose friends something begins to happen you can experience what Jesus experienced in the wilderness you're alone you just had a great baptism experience you're alone you're without friends without nobody but you're saying no to compromise this time doesn't last long you get out in the power of the Holy Spirit but if you constantly keep your friends and violate your conscience remember this your friends are gonna pull you down your friends are not gonna be there before God and your friends when you're in trouble delete your number and walk away and I've seen it to many people that happen that when you need help financial help they can't help you when you need somebody to visit to jail none of them are there and they're only there when you have money they're only there when you are powerful and popular but until when you need real help you need real encouragement and real uplifting nobody is there so guess what you know friends are good but when you walk with God and you know they're going to be drinking they're going to be abusing drugs that they're going to be getting laid over there you say you know what I know my flesh wants it but I choose to live in peace with my conscience and if I'm going to sleep at home by myself for, for months but I'm going to sleep with my conscience amen there are people who say I don't need to go to church I believe in God well Satan believes in God and he's going to hell that kind of faith that you believe in God I don't need to go to church that's not gonna help you other people say at the age of 13 I prayed a sinner's prayer I gave my life to Jesus and I got baptized and I, I know today I, I live you know well I'm trying my best smoking drinking not honoring my parents not reading my Bible not committed to God but I prayed a prayer at the age of 14 did you know that a long time ago Satan was in heaven he's still going to hell the fact that at the age of 13 you prayed a magic prayer does not save you if you're living like the devil you're gonna go where the devil is going You gotta understand there's a difference between indulging in sin and fighting sin and indulging in sin is not gonna bring us to heaven no matter how many magic prayers you have prayed you gotta repent from sin you gotta walk away from sin and you gotta make a decision I will guard my conscience 
and when you make a mistake you get up you repent and you say I will go again after God people who and the reason why I speak in this is not because I never violated my conscience it's just when it bugs me and when I hold sometimes a little bitterness towards somebody or I can't stand this person in the church or I can't stand that person and I go on for one day I mean I feel sick and I would spend time in prayer battling and saying God please help me to either forgive or remove this person remove me but do something because I cannot live with it I violate my conscience as much as you do but I want us to learn one thing when your conscience is bothered do not ignore it wrestle with it pray fast do whatever you need to do but do not push it aside because there will be a time you would want to hear from your conscience and it will be silent I want to challenge you today to repent from your sin I want to challenge you today to commit to holiness this nonsense has to stop where people are committed to God and they're not praying they're not winning souls they're not living for God and they're walking with this badge that I am a Christian and having an anointing sticker on your card is not going to help you if you're living like the devil because anointing does not protect demons anointing protects children of God can somebody say amen I want to challenge all of us to commit to a life of holiness to commit to a life of honoring and seeking God it was this testimony that I I heard um, we'll post it on Facebook tomorrow because it's a little bit lengthy it's of a Greek man who was a Muslim man and he did not serve God at all he was an artist his wife was an artist they were in love he started to commit a fear on his wife he started to cheat on his wife she found out and she was heartbroken she almost packed her leg luggage and left and this routine time that he was going to her, his lover and as he's walking in he hears this still small voice it says if you don't repent you're gonna die and he heard the voice he said it was so clear that he says I stopped in my tracks but he still went and he committed sin again as he's walking out from that house from this person that he committed sin with his ring falls off he falls he tries to catch his ring he, 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 he got on the floor and this voice came again he says this is the last warning you will die and he said at that point he said, I got on my knees right there in the apartment stairs he said I cried out to this I don't know who it was I said whoever you are please help me because I want to love my wife but I, and I want to listen to this voice but I don't have the power even if though I want to and he says right there in the apartment stairs he said the presence at the time I didn't know who it was came upon me he says I felt though the voice convicted me but the sense of love I felt he says it was enormous and that night I had a dream of Jesus he says and the same voice I heard it here I heard it in my dreams but now it was from the lips of Jesus he said I knew it was Jesus speaking he says in my I woke up from my dream I told my wife that I committed these sins and I repented starting that day this Jesus continues to guide this man in dreams to help other people they sent an American team there to investigate and these leaders from an America they said that he wakes up in the morning and says in a dream I saw that man over there we will go today and we will see whether it's true or not and this man testified and they said we would go there with him and he says he starts a conversation he says hey he says I need to tell you about Jesus as he's telling him about Jesus and tells his testimony it turns out that that man has just been cheating on his wife 30 minutes ago and right there a Muslim man under a bridge this American man explains he says he gives his life to Jesus Christ and he says we see the supernatural things that God leads this painter who doesn't work for preaching who just paints but God guides him through this voice but it all started at the time when he wasn't even a Christian at the voice of the Holy Spirit through his conscience says you gotta stop and then he started to follow God through this I want to challenge you today protect your faith by guarding your conscience protect your faith by guarding your conscience when your conscience bothers you it might not be that right away you're able to do it I remember when me and my wife felt this in our heart to give a certain amount of money last year it took four months before we actually did it because we we for a month we kind of wrestled it was like that's a lot we're losing our mind what is happening and then after we prayed we made a decision that we will do it but then it still took time before we would do it and so the most important part is that you never ever ignore it. Amen.